Virtual network routers, what are they? Do you need them? Why should you care? Well, basically a virtual router is exactly what it sounds like. It's a router that's built into a virtual machine instead of a piece of hardware. This offers several advantages for students, teachers, people studying for certifications, and uh, even in the enterprise. What are these advantages? Well, it's a virtual machine, and why do we put anything in a virtual machine? Because a lot of these advantages also apply to routers. So first is the lower total cost of ownership of anything in a VM. Uh, you're not paying specifically for hardware specific to that router or PC. It's eating less energy, generally, than a device with its own power supply. And of course it takes up a lot less room, which is pretty important if you have a small house or apartment. In addition, virtual machines are easier to set up and re-image, which is particularly important for people doing a lot of labs, like networking people. What is specifically good about virtual routers? Well, many of the images that you're going to use are actually free. And this is really good news for students, as well as anyone else, but particularly for students because, you know, school's pretty expensive. So the images are free, but also you can do this on completely free hypervisors, and I'll get into some of your good choices there. And finally, if you're used to hardware labs where you're buying all stuff from one vendor, say Cisco, which is quite typical, or if you're using a simulator like Packet Tracer, uh, you're not going to see any other vendor's devices. If you're using virtual routers, you can use anyone's devices, provided that you have a valid image for it. You can even mix up the vendors in the same topology, which is something that you would almost never be able to do using any other setup except for an extremely expensive hardware rack. So there's a lot of advantages there, but there's also a couple of things which are not as good about virtual routers, and I want to touch on them here real quickly just so you know what your limitations are. Uh, it's definitely not as complete a learning experience as you can get with hardware. With hardware, you're going to get layer one problems like bad wiring, cables gone bad, ports uh, go bad. That's not going to happen in an emulated environment. In addition, the hypervisor and or the emulator are potential points of failures. Uh, this is a problem that I ran into when I would run into a bug or something that just didn't work and I would wonder, did I configure it wrong? Or is there something wrong in my router image or my emulator? And finally, no matter what anyone says, emulators and virtual machines are still very, very bad at switching. VMs are really good at layer three. They're terrible at anything layer two or below. And specifically for networking, this is because hardware switches rely a lot on ASICs, which are hardware components, and you cannot effectively emulate them in software. If you're serious about studying advanced switching, I would still recommend getting some hardware switches. You can even tie them into your emulator. There's a lot of people who do that, and it's a perfectly fine setup for advanced switching labs. All right, let's say that you want to get into virtual routers, or you just want to try them out. What do you need to get? What kind of tools do you need to download, besides the host that you're using, of course? Well, first of all, you need to get a hypervisor, or maybe a couple of hypervisors. Now, please note that if you're using a base system like uh, Ubuntu 1604 or some other uh, flavor of Linux, which is compatible with Genus 3, you might be able to skip this step, but we're going to plow ahead as if you weren't. Your best choice for hypervisors is definitely VMware. It's widely used, it has a ton of support, and most importantly, it is the best way to handle nested virtual machines. That's where there's a VM inside a VM, maybe inside another VM. It's a VM exception here, but you definitely need to have that capability if you're trying to run something like GNS3 or even G on Windows or Macintosh. There are a couple of versions of VMware. There's, of course, the paid version, which can get outrageously expensive, especially if you're a student. There's also VM Workstation Player, which is their free version. And this works perfectly fine for one VM, not so much for more of them. So if you don't want to spend any money and you absolutely have to run Genus 3 in Windows or Mac OS, get this version of VMware and use that to run uh, either the GNS3 VM or the EVNG host. There's also VMware ESXi, which is the Type 1 bare metal hypervisor. You install that on a server, and then you remote into that server, and you set up a whole bunch of VMs. That's also doable, but ESXi is a little different from the typical workstation installations of VMware. So I strongly suggest that you get familiar with ESXi and read up on any specific installation instructions. So let's say you're using VMware uh, Workstation Player, and you know you're going to use that to host the primary VM for your emulator, but you want to connect to other things that are maybe outside of that emulator. 
Uh, like, say you have some wacky ISOs that don't play nice with uh, QEMU, uh, or you just want to do it this way because it feels more like an actual virtualized network environment, and that's fine. You can install Oracle VirtualBox alongside VMware, and it'll work just fine. It's not a good choice to host the primary server because it doesn't do nested VMs well, but it works perfectly fine for hosting single VMs like, say, a router. And you can install a whole bunch of them, tie them into your emulator, and you're off to the races. So that's your hypervisor. Now you're going to need a network emulator. Uh, you can think of a network emulator as a specialized sort of hypervisor uh, that lets you build a network out of smaller VMs with layer 2 links in between them, which is something that you can't do in a typical hypervisor. They're specifically made for networking labs. Uh, if you're using one of these things already, like say GNS3 or even G, you're already using virtual routers. You might just not know it yet. There are two network emulators that I'm going to recommend that you try. The one that I most strongly recommend, especially if you're newer at this, is GNS3. It's got the widest support base. It's the best documented. Uh, it works in just about any client OS as long as it's 64-bit that you can think of. And you can even run some older versions in 32-bit if you absolutely have to. I'm going to say go ahead and get GNS3 if this is your first foray into network emulators. Uh, the other popular choice is something called EVNG. This is a fork of an older emulator that was called UNETLAB. It's clientless, it's web-based, uh, which means that you can run your server in a VM or wherever you want, and then you log in through a web browser. It's a little more complicated setup, requires a lot more familiarity with Linux, but some people prefer to GNS3. I've used it, it's perfectly fine. It's a little harder to set up. Now there's a third option, which is that you can do this in a bare hypervisor with no emulator. You just install your routers into VMware or VirtualBox or whatever you happen to be using. You link them together with the virtual switch, which is built into the hypervisor, and you tell them to talk to each other and go. This is a little disadvantageous when it comes to traditional networking labs because you can't make layer two connections and so none of your layer two protocols are gonna work. But this is a lot closer to how you deploy virtual routers in the real world. So it's good to know how to do this, even if it's not your primary choice. All right, now you have your hypervisor, you have your emulator. The last thing you need is router images. In most emulator videos, this is where the guy points you to kind of a dodgy website with a weird extension where maybe you can get some 10 or 15 year old Cisco IOS versions and maybe a little something extra for your trouble. That's not what we're doing here. Not gonna judge you, enjoy your rootkit. What I'm talking about, are legitimate free router images. I mean, there are some that are paid to, but I'm concentrating on the free ones that you can install into VMs and work up in the emulator of your choice. This was a college project for me, and I chose three router engines to try. Uh, the first was something called Vios, which is a free open source fork of an older project called Viata, which was then kind of bought and shut down by Brocade, and now I think AT&T owns it. Anyway, I took the free one. The second router that I chose was actually a plain old Debian 9 Linux server, uh, installing the packages that I needed to as I needed them, primarily one called FRR, or Free Range Routing. And then as I needed more services that would normally be included in a router, like, say, DHCP, or NAT, or NTP, uh, I just went out and found the packages I needed and installed them one by one. And the third router image I got, which is totally free and legitimate, is the Cisco CSR1000V, which, yeah, that was a surprise to me, too. But uh, there are versions of this cloud services router that you can get completely legitimately if you have a CCO account, which is also free. I'll have links in the description so you can get it yourself as long as you have a CCO account. Uh, they do have restrictions, specifically the interfaces are limited to 100 kilobits, so it's obviously useless for actual deployment, but I think that's obviously intentional. They're perfectly fine for labs. Now this is what I chose. There are tons of other choices available. BSDRP, Cumulus VX, uh, you could take a PFSense firewall image and hack it a little bit to uh, put routing protocols into it. You can go really far down this rabbit hole. There are a lot of choices out there, and I encourage you to explore. All right, let's say you've downloaded these packages and now you're wondering, well, how do I install all this stuff? The first thing that I'm going to recommend is that you go and read. Find the sites uh, that contain the instructions and the wikis for these software packages and read, read, read. And if you are claiming to be any kind of an IT person or networking person, you 
better know how to do your own research. If you're the kind of person who turns on packetry for the first time and you don't know how to configure anything and your first instinct is to go post on Facebook, how do I use this router? This might not be the field for you. That may sound a little bit snarky, and it is, and it's also true. Regardless, I'll give you a couple of hints just so uh, you know the kind of things that I did and that I looked up and maybe some of the pitfalls that I ran into. So the first thing you want to do is install your hypervisor or hypervisors. As I mentioned before, if you're using Windows or Apple and one of the emulators I was talking about, VMware is absolutely mandatory. And if you're using VMware Player, then VirtualBox might also be necessary. Uh, installing these hypervisors is really not that difficult. Just go do the reading. It's perfectly fine. If you need help, there are plenty of communities and help files available for you to check it out. ESXi, a little more involved, but if you're using ESXi, you already know this. All right, now your hypervisor or hypervisors are working. It's time to install your emulator. If you're installing GNS3, it has a reputation of being a little bit finicky, but I got to tell you, recent versions are actually not that bad to install. Uh, there are a couple of things that you want to look out for. First of all, when you install a GNS3 package, you want to make sure that all the add-on packages also get installed. This includes things like virtual network drivers, especially Wireshark, uh, maybe some tools from SolarWinds, which are pretty nice. Not necessarily, but they're nice to have. Uh, and you might run into problems if you have an old version of Windows, like I do. Maybe you're missing some C++ libraries or uh, Visual C libraries. Make sure that everything gets installed. If you have to go out and find those libraries yourself and install them separately, go do it. If this means you have to back out of your installation and reinstall the whole thing all over again, do that. You do not want to miss any of those packages. Another thing you should know about GNS3 and really about any network emulator is that they do a lot of things that look a whole lot like an attacker to any reasonable antivirus. They're doing things like forging packets, they're creating their own subnets, they're bridging networks into the internet. It looks awfully suspicious, and rightfully so, a lot of antiviruses will go and shut them down or at least make it so slow as to be unusable. So exclude the GNS3 folder from your antivirus scanner and also make sure that GNS3 has uh, network permissions so it can get out and do what it needs to and even route between internal networks on your computer. If you're still having trouble with GNS3, go on YouTube and look for David Bombal and watch his videos. He is the absolute best source for information on GNS3 and a lot of other topics as well. He has tons of videos out there. Go watch them. If on the other hand you're installing EVNG, it's probably because you're already familiar with the GNS3 and you want to try something different. Just go follow the instructions to the letter. There's a lot of documentation. It's not organized so well, but you can figure it out. And I hope you like working in the Linux shell because you're going to be there a whole lot. All right, let's uh, assume here that you haven't screwed up too badly and you've got your hypervisors and GNS3 running up and it's not spitting a bunch of errors at you. Now you've got to install your router images. Well, how do you do that? There's a couple of ways. One way that you can install routers is QEMU or Quick Emulator. Uh, this is a really nice and powerful and sometimes confusing Linux package that creates VMs inside your Linux operating system. If you're using GNS3, there are usually these little router images where you can just kind of drag them over. You upload the uh, OS you're using, you upload the QEMU package that you're using to simulate, let's say, like, you know, 8 gig storage router and it'll do all that work for you. It's really, really, really convenient. And they're updating these images all the time. In fact, there is a nice little wizard now for installing VOS routers that wasn't there when I started this project. They actually brought that in during some version iterations. So it's a lot easier now than when I started it. And by the way, QMU is the only way that I will install devices for use in EVNG. They don't have friendly little wizards, so you're going to have to get down and dirty. Don't panic. There's plenty of really good step-by-step -step instructions on the EVNG site. Just look them up. So let's say that you don't want to do this for some reason. You Maybe you have an image that doesn't play well with the QMU, or you just want the experience. That's fine. So here's how you set them up in a separate hypervisor like VirtualBox. You find out the system requirements of your router image. In this case, Let's uh, say it's VOS. They're pretty modest, about 512 megs of RAM, maybe 4 or 8 gigs of storage. You can get away with 4, believe me, I did it. Uh, so then you create a new VM, uh, name it whatever you want that you're going to remember. Set up your system resources, 
you're going to want to make sure you have four network cards. Pro tip, you can actually get up to eight, but you have to do some command line chicanery with a virtual box to make that happen. Make sure that they're not attached. Uh, the reason you're doing this is that when these devices connect to Genus 3, Genus 3 is going to take over the configuration of these network devices, and so you want to leave them unattached, so Genus 3 can go ahead and do that. Add the ISO image to the optical drive, uh, boot it up, and go through whatever installation procedures are required. Now, if you are doing this and using an external hypervisor for your routers, you're going to need to have one virtual machine for each router in your topology. That's because your configurations on an external hypervisor are saved with the VM. They're not in a separate config file that applies to the same image like QEMU works. So when you create a new router using your ISO, you're going to make sure that you have as many copies of it as you need for your topology. So now you have a working router and you've got to link it to GNS3. There's a pretty simple menu way to do this. You just go into the settings and I'll just kind of run through the steps here. You want to go to preferences and then you'll see down here you've got a bunch of options. Here we're using VirtualBox, so you select VirtualBox VMs. Then you look down here, you might have to scroll down the list as you can see, I've got a ton of them here. Uh, you want to hit new and then just run through the steps there. After you're done, you may have to reconfigure it so that it appears in the correct group and it looks the way that you want it to and it, most importantly that it has enough network adapters. And then it's ready to use. So now you have hypervisors, you have an emulator, you even have router images and you're pretty sure that they work. Well, what do you do now? Well, now you gotta go get some labs. There's You have a couple options here. It's pretty much like anyone trying to get labs for GNS3, you just have to look around. If you have Packet Tracer labs, say you were in NetAcademy or whatever, you can just convert them uh, as best you can, which is a good way to find out what your new routers can do and can't do, especially if they're not Cisco routers. There's also some places like GNS3 Vault and Free CCNA Workbook, which have a lot of labs that you can try out. If you're working on a specific concept, you can and should make your own labs. You create the bare minimum topology you need to implement whatever it is that you want to implement uh, then you try it out see if it works and then fix it and finally if you really want to you can have my test topology that I created uh, for this uh, college project I'm just gonna put a link down in the description it's a little bit involved and some of the router images actually have problems with certain section of it but that's fine that's part of the discovery process now, while you're working with unfamiliar routers, most of what you'll be learning is the syntax that that router uses, but sometimes there are some gotchas. Uh, you may find some of your own. Here are a couple of mine that I found that may be useful to you. If you are linking GNS3 to uh, external hypervisor, specifically VirtualBox for your routers, you're going to run into some strange bugs, or you could run into some strange bugs involving your interfaces. Specifically, you'll find that maybe you'll have a problem where 802.1Q subinterfaces just don't work at all, or DHCP relay is broken. This bothered me for a very long time uh, until I tried the following fix. You go into Genus 3 where you're configuring your uh, NIC types, change them to Vertio or paravirtualized interfaces. Uh, for some reason, the default value of emulating an Intel uh, network interface card just causes all kinds of problems when you're linking VMs from an external hypervisor. I'm not sure why, I have a couple of theories, but I haven't had time to really investigate it. Just switch this to Vertio and uh, avoid a lot of problems. If you're using VS 1.1.8 as I did, uh, there is a bug that got through in this version where LLDP will not work at all unless you fix some dependencies. Uh, I'll have instructions for how to do that down in the description in case you want to know that. Basically, you're just creating symbolic links to some newer cryptography packages. If you're using Debian Linux with the FRR package, a lot of your standard routing configuration is going to be done in something called VTYSH, which is the virtual terminal shell. Uh, there is a problem that I found where you cannot assign an interface to take an address from DHCP. You're gonna have to do that the old-fashioned way. Get out Nano or whatever text editor you like and go modify ETC network interfaces. So now you should be good to go. Go ahead and make your own videos. If you have any questions, uh, put them down in the comments and I, or hopefully someone who's smarter than I, uh, might have an answer for you. Thanks for watching.